Welcome. Thanks for popping in today. Well, the ewes are bred, hopefully, and are due to begin lambing soon. It's time to assess the contents of the lambing kit to make sure that we have all the supplies on hand that we will need to facilitate a successful lambing season. Lambing is happening soon. We call the window of time that we expect lambs to be born, Lamb Watch. We have five ewes that were bred this year. Hope, Honey, Dew, Faith, and Mason Bee. We're expecting lambs to begin arriving in early March and all the lambs to be born during the month of March. This is one of the most exciting times of year on the farm when we welcome fresh new lambs to the herd. If you would like to see video of our past lambing seasons, please click the link in the description box below. If you'd like to be notified when we begin lambing this year, click the subscribe button and also click the little bell so that you'll be notified when we upload future videos. This is our fourth time welcoming lamb. We are new to raising sheep. We've had sheep for almost five years now. We have encountered some issues during lambing. We've had to help two of our first time mamas that had a little trouble birthing single lambs that were a little bit on the large side. This is not uncommon with first-time moms. This happened with our two Dorpers. The St. Croix have always birthed unassisted, knock on wood. We've also had some issues post lambing. Last year in 2022, we lost two lambs that were just under two days old. They did not make it through their second night. Um, we're not sure why they didn't make it. They both had colostrum. They were both nursing. They both seemed fine and happy. So we will be watching much more closely for all the other signs of lamb welfare. So hopefully we can avoid this situation from happening again. This was a heartbreaking day for the sheep farm. All in all, despite a few instances, we have had relatively few issues with the ewes birthing and raising their young to weaning. We hope this will continue to be the case this year. The ewes were all very well conditioned going into breeding and they have kept their condition nicely despite the low forage in the pastures. They have been eating local grass hay and during the last few weeks of gestation will mix in some alfalfa to increase their protein intake. We want to be cautious not to grow the babies too large because that will cause complications with lambing. We have no prior farming experience. So you may wonder, where did my education come from regarding sheep husbandry? And I have a few sources I'd like to talk to you about today. The first resource I have is my veterinarian. I have a good veterinarian who is available to me to answer questions over the phone or to come out for a farm call at, on an as-needed basis. So that's a great resource that we have. Another resource that I have is a neighbor who is my sheep mentor. I would recommend that for anyone new to raising any kind of livestock, that you seek out someone who has the knowledge and experience necessary to help answer your questions that you will inevitably encounter 
as you journey through raising that animal. Another resource that I've used is Google. Of course, with a healthy dose of common sense and verifying with other sources as well to ensure the information I've ran across is credible. And on the same vein, I also belong to several Facebook groups pertaining to sheep and a lot of questions that I've had have been addressed by the group either currently or in the past. And so that's also a great way to tap into knowledge of those who have been raising sheep longer than I have. Hi Bernie. Another resource that I've benefited from has been other YouTube channels. One in particular, Sandy Brock out of Canada. I've been watching her videos and although our management styles for our sheep vary significantly, uh, I still find that I'm able to learn a lot from the content that she posts, especially regarding lambing. I hope and pray that I do not encounter many of the issues that she does. I have a fraction of the number of sheep in my flock as she does. Um, but I found it immensely helpful that should I encounter some of the things that I've seen on her videos, I at least have a baseline knowledge for how to handle that situation should it arise. Lambing happens fast, and so it's imperative to be prepared ahead of time. Once those ewes go into labor, it's go time. And the last thing I need to be doing is running around all over town to get the supplies that I need. I need to be here watching over the lambs and making sure that they're healthy and strong and getting everything that they need. These are the supplies that I find it useful to have on hand during lambing. Let's go over the contents of the lambing kit. The first item is the vaccination for the use. We give them this vaccination, CDT, that I get at the local farm store, and we give this to them two to six weeks before they lamb. This is so that they can build up an immunity that comes through their milk so the baby lambs, when they're born and they drink the mother's milk, they get that immunity from the mother. And I also have these three milliliter syringes and a variety of sizes of needles to give the injections. The next item on my list is not one that I could bring inside to show you. So I will play some video and post some photos from our lambing jugs in the past. If you're wondering what that is, that is a pen where you put the mother and the baby lamb right after birth so that the mom and the newborn lamb can bond. So this helps to prevent rejection of the lamb from the mother and really just helps the lamb get off to a good start having easy access to the mother for nursing and getting the important colostrum in that first 24 hours. In the lambing jug, we like to provide plenty of clean bedding. Our preferred bedding is straw. We also provide a water pail and for the first day or so we mix in molasses to encourage the mother to drink and also provide a little nutrition boost with the minerals in the molasses. Uh, we provide them with minerals and also a hay feeder so that they can have as much feed as they want to keep their energy up. The next item is elbow length poly gloves. Let me show you what these look like. They're long gloves that go up to your elbow and lube. This is in case we have to go in after a lamb that's stuck, and we have actually had to use these before. So 
we like to have those. I also have these black nitrile gloves for when we need more sanitary conditions, but we're not going inside the U to get a stuck lamp. So I keep the box of these on hand. The next item I like to have on hand are these puppy pads. So if the sheep are giving birth out in the field, which is where they usually do it, I can lay this out on the ground. Hopefully the mom puts the baby on it. Um, it can be a little comical to try to get this underneath the baby as it's dropping, but I try to. In any event, I can put the baby on here so that the mom can lick the baby off and we can keep it out of the mud and the wet grass in the field. Probably not necessary, but it makes me feel better. If it's really cold during lambing, um, then I like to sometimes put a sweater. Or if I have a lamb that's just shivering a lot in those first few hours, um, I like to make sure that they're warm because if the lamb gets too cold, they actually won't be able to nurse or even take a bottle. So we use these as needed and they are super cute. So I'll flash a picture of what the lambs look like in the lamb sweaters. We can usually take these off after that first day and even if it is still cold outside by then, the lambs are able to regulate their own temperature, they're nursing off the mom, they're looking lively, then these can come off. The next item in the kit are washroom replacer and bottles with a variety of nipples. In the event that we have a lamb who's having trouble nursing or a mom that doesn't have enough milk supply for the baby, it's important to have colostrum on hand and it can be these powdered packets, not my favorite. My favorite source of colostrum would be to save it from another ewe that had extra, milk her out, and put that in the freezer. That would be best, sheep milk colostrum. Next best would be um, colostrum from my neighbor's dairy cow. That's my vet told me that's the best replacer even over this. But I do have this in case I don't have either of the other types of colostrum. Those items get us through birth up through the first 24 hours or so of the lamb's life. After that, we have some more supplies. We have another injection to do. We do this injection of Bose, I think that's how you say it, it's selenium. And we give this to the lambs, I get it from my veterinarian. And we give this to them because we have selenium deficient soil and sheep can get a disease called white muscle disease if they get too deficient in selenium. So we give this to the lambs uh, before we let them out of the lambing jug on day two. We usually leave them in about 48 hours. So that's when we give them their selenium. The next item is a scale and a sling. The sling I got at Premier One, Livestock Supplies, I think, that's what they're called. And how this works is the lamb's feet go through here, the front legs, and then you can pick this up and the sling goes underneath the lamb's belly. Its rear end sticks out over here. And then, I can get a weight on the lamb with the fish scale here. Have this little hook, that little hook, and there. Then it gets me a rudimentary weight. It's probably not super accurate, but it's good enough that I have an idea of what the lamb weighed at birth. And that's important uh, because I'm a data junkie. So I like to track the data on the lambs of their birth weights. But also if we had a lamb that we weren't sure if it was gaining weight or losing weight, 
I would be able to use this same scale to compare how it's doing. The next item I have is the ear tagger and the ear tags. So this we could do before we let the lambs out of the lambing jug. However, we're not required to tag the lambs unless they're going to be leaving the farm. So I prefer not to unless I know that they're going to be leaving. So we'll do this um, right before they leave the farm at weaning when they're purchased by a new buyer and we know they're going to be leaving the farm. So I have a disinfectant spray. I spray on their ear. I do separate these tags off before we do that process. Um, so how this works is we put the rounded side in there. We put the pointy side on here and you squeeze. It's just like getting your ear pierced at the mall. The next item I have, we've actually never used before, and this is called an elastrator. So what the elastrator is, is it's what you use to dock the tails. Oh, there went my little rubber bands. So it comes with these tiny little rubber bands that you put, let's see if I can do it here, around like so and you squeeze to open it and you put the lamb's tail in there up to the point that you want to dock it and then close that up, take your tool out and that stays on the lamb's tail. Um, this is also what we would use to castrate any ram lambs to make them a weather. Um, we, as I said, haven't done that before. We prefer to leave the sheep as natural as possible, but if I had a buyer that really wanted to have the tail docked or have a ram castrated, we have the tools on hand. And on that topic of buyer preference, um, we use the same CBT vaccination for the lambs that we do for the ewes. We tend to wait until we know who the buyer is and whether or not they have a preference on if the lamb is vaccinated or not. Some people prefer it, some people don't. So that way we're able to vaccinate the lamb before they go to their new home if that's what the owner prefers. So these are the items that we have in our lambing kit, the items that we use during and shortly after birth, and the items that we use in the weeks following. If you also raise sheep, what are the items that you find useful to have on hand during lambing? Leave a comment down below and let me know. I am excited to include the new lambs in upcoming videos soon. Thanks for joining me today and learning about lambing. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it with someone that you know that also may enjoy the video. And please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified of future content that we upload, click subscribe and ring the little notification bell. Have a great day. Each year, as the days grow longer, spring sends its signals. The same patterns persist year after year no matter the constant changes of life's circumstances. The sunrise creeps ever so slightly higher in the sky. The daffodils begin to pop through the soil. The trees begin to bud with the promise of leaves to come. And here on the farm, new life is born. It is with eager anticipation that we await the arrival of this year's lambs. It is a magical signal of spring and the consistent reminder that the season is changing yet again.